endometrial cancer is the topic for this video and endometrial cancer is um, the most common uh, gynecological cancer uh, in women um, so a, a very important topic of course um, this uh, cancer uh, happens um, for one predominant reason and that is um, too much estrogen and what they really are saying is unopposed estrogen either estrogen that a person takes uh, exogenously or estrogen that's produced by the body um, endogenously so some of the key risk factors there are include obesity uh, also things that would cause uh, other high circulating levels of estrogen uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome uh, late menopause and um, other estrogen producing tumors um, so th this is the key uh, element here of the, the cause there's other um, uh, risk factors uh, or causes or things that would make it more likely uh, to happen diabetes is another risk factor uh, so is high blood pressure hypertension uh, and so is a positive family history of this um, but by far unopposed estrogen is the key issue in terms of etiology so uh, what would happen if a woman does de develop endometrial cancer by far the most common symptom presenting symptom is uh, postmenopausal vaginal bleeding a woman typically reaches menopause at about age they say the average is 51 in North America age 51 um, postmenopausal of course would be after that and on average the mean um, age of someone having endometrial cancer is 61 so clearly you know a good 10 years after menopause a woman presents with bleeding this is by far uh, a very uh, worrisome symptom and of all the women that do have postmenopausal bleeding a good one-third of them indeed have cancer of the endometrium so if uh, a patient does indeed have postmenopausal bleeding what is the way of uh, proceeding what is the next step and by far the the most important is to do an endometrial biopsy it's a direct indication uh, any woman who's past menopause and has bleeding should have an endometrial biopsy and that is done and it is 90 percent accurate in its uh, diagnosis of uh, endometrial cancer the treatment of endometrial cancer involves a total hysterectomy so uh, you often see this uh, abbreviation because it's so long to write out T-A-H-B-S-O what is that? It's total abdominal hysterectomy hysterectomy and the BSO is bilateral salpingo oophorectomy and uh, for those of you who are not familiar with these terms um, salpingo oophorectomy simply refers to also uh, removing the fallopian tubes and ovary so I would like to now proceed to some clinical vignettes and here we go a 63 year old woman with type 2 diabetes comes to the office after five episodes of vaginal bleeding over the past three months there is no discharge accompanying the bleeding the patient has been postmenopausal for 12 years and has never experienced any bleeding since then past medical history is significant for anxiety depression hypertension gout patient refuses to give a sexual history blood pressure is 140 over 90 pulse is 80 weight is 300 pounds you're concerned that her vaginal bleeding is caused by well this is of course obesity you got diabetes you got high blood pressure so those are some of the risk factors and then you have the telltale symptom vaginal bleeding in a postmenopausal woman and we are definitely concerned about endometrial cancer next question a 62 year old woman comes to the physician because of bleeding from the vagina she states that her last menstrual period came 11 years ago and that she has had no bleeding since that time she has hypertension and type 2 diabetes examination shows mildly obese woman in no apparent distress pelvic exam is unremarkable an endometrial biopsy is performed that shows grade 1 endometrial adenocarcinoma which of the following is the most appropriate next step well uh, the diagnosis has already been made 
So without further ado, she needs to have um, what we talked about, which is a total abdominal hysterectomy, which would be choice E.